Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, please pay your respect to uh, Emperor C. Wang San Wan Sui Wan Sui Wan Wan Sui. Yo, so so basically uh Xi Jinping has uh secured a third term without even needing to secure it. Uh, basically the entire topic of secession, the entire topic of uh you know uh Anjio term finished. Uh, was not even mentioned at all in the latest uh which the just concluded national congress uh of the chinese communist communist party and uh, effectively uh mr c over here or emperor c now uh e effectively uh has basically secured control especially he made a big show of uh sending uh the previous uh, premier hu Jintao out very very publicly uh from the stage and uh this is definitely not normal so although you know Hu Jintao is uh, very old and uh, probably not very healthy I guess uh, but such a public show of uh, getting him sent out on the very final day uh, is a show of force and uh, it, as a result the remaining uh, the new standing community committee uh, is all Xi Jinping's uh, guys and uh, basically everyone uh, within the Hu the Hu or Hu Jintao's uh, gang is basically all knocked out of position and uh, Xi Jinping has finally secured uh, entire full power. However, uh, no, uh, let's get uh, uh, Huang Chang Ni Xian Zhou Ba, you know, the whatever, then uh, he's gone. Okay, so no, asked, I asked the, temp the emperor to just get lost. So anyway, uh, the, however, this third term is definitely is going to be the most difficult and challenging term of uh, Xi Jinping's uh, presidency or uh, career in the very top spot uh, of the Chinese Communist Communist Party's China, uh, the People's Republic of China. So uh, just in case uh, you guys do not know, there's actually two Chinas in this world. There's a People's Republic of China and there's Republic of China. And the Republic of China is basically Taiwan. Um, but Taiwan is not just Taiwan. Now, Taiwan is actually a lot more than just the island here. There is a few more islands on the side. And also, you know, the Kinmen County here. So together, collectively, this is the Republic of China. Uh, this is the remnants of the nationalist army that was defeated by the Communist Party's army, the People's Liberation Army, and they retreated over to Taiwan. And they continue to hold uh, Kinmen County, which the... Communist forces had tried really hard to try to conquer and had failed uh, thus far. So, uh, so this is just to put into context. You know. But you no, know, when we speak of China today, of course, we are talking about the People's Republic of China, the the China that is being recognized. The whole world currently you know uh, follow this principle of a one China policy. So they never. It's not a. People's Republic of China is China policy or the Communist Party of China's China is China's policy. It is one China spot policy. So one China policy means that at any one time there can only be one China and uh, it depends on which China do you prefer. Do you prefer the Republic of China or do you prefer the People's Republic of China? So just to put this out uh, in case you guys are confused about the whole concept of the one China policy is deliberately vague in this way so uh and but anyway it suits the communists because uh, they are the dominant china at this moment so so how so you no know, now we want to go into how is this uh going to be the most challenging uh term for xi jinping and um it's very evident from all the crazy stuff that had happened over the past three months to not not even half a year, three months, July, September, October, November. So four months, sorry. So so three months actually from July to now seven, eight, nine, ten. No four months, sorry. So anyway, for the past you no know, three four months, uh, there's enough signals to tell us that whoever is going to take over China from Xi Jinping or Xi Jinping himself going to continue the power, which is now we know that. He is the one that is going to continue. He's going to face tremendous challenge because of a lot of self-inflicted problems. And uh, first thing first, uh, you no, know, is the property market the biggest you no know, problem that we know of? And this all start off with uh, 
with the the situation by you no know, uh this group called Evergrande, which actually triggers all this crazy shit. And uh this thing continued to escalate. You know, I'm sure you have already heard of Evergrande and uh we'll go through you no know, this uh situation. So there will be the property market, the real estate situation, and then there will be the the COVID, a little bit about COVID the natural disaster and then the economy so this will be a rather long video so you no know, go and get some coffee you know pause the video and get some coffee you know get some salt add some msg and uh don't do that uh and then let's carry on so um so the there is a few news i'll go through quickly because uh, there is way too much uh, news to go through the shanghai-based shimao group has failed to pay the interest and our uh, principal on the one billion billion dollar bond and uh this actually you know have a major blow to the chinese uh property market and uh this debt the according to moody's estimate this shimao group uh has the debt maturing in 20 2022 including 1.1.7 billion dollar worth of bonds held by international investors 8.9 billions held by chinese investor and of course a uh, sizable of uh, bank loans so uh i'm not sure how it's going to repay this uh game over and uh and then over in hernan um there is protest you know so this some of these protests i think uh, got very viral uh where thousands of customers stage a mass protest uh, at the bank of china branch in hernan demanding their savings to be returned because uh uh the the savings have been uh have been uh, frozen uh and uh they are demonstrating then the but the demands are ignored by the authorities and then uh on the 14th of July, you know, this situation, you know, all this worry about the real estate, uh, all, all these developers are unable to pay their, their debts and their bonds, and then they are all threatening to become uh, bankrupt, has uh, gotten the China's home buyers uh, into a paranoid uh, situation. So they are now refusing, or rather in July 14, they are refusing to pay mortgages across dozens of cities on unfinished homes so you know they are not going to pay anymore unless the homes are built uh, and uh, because a lot of these uh, homes are actually you know while they are supposed to be built they pause because the developers run out of money so and uh, they, they are unable to pay their sub their contractors and then they just stop building and then uh, and the problem is that they already collected all the money because the banks actually financed it and the uh, people actually borrowed from the bank to pay for the houses so the developers already taken the money and run away and the banks are the one that are in charge of uh taking all this uh, money you know all this repayment of mortgages and uh now the customers don't want to pay and uh this so as you can see here in this article that i quoted that they say that uh the boycott comes because growing numbers of projects uh, have delayed or stalled and uh so you know home prices are also falling which means that the buyers are now going to be locked into properties that are uh, is worth much lesser than what they have paid so this is you know causing a lot of worries uh with the banks and and as such uh the banks and the property stocks start falling you know they and then uh Chinese developers listed on the mainland and Hong Kong fell sharply and uh, this movement has spread to you know, Chinese, uh, many Chinese provinces, provinces and uh, involved more than 100 uh, property, uh, ch property projects and uh, small lenders also suffered a strong sell-off you know, the banks, you know, Chinese, China Merchant Bank, Industrial Bank all dropped by 6 Point three and three point six percent respectively. So the banks are themselves are also you know losing ground, and uh because of this situation, and then um uh, on the eighteenth, um the authorities of China you no know, move to quash the revolt, uh that have threatened not to pay on these uh re unfinished properties. So, so uh, um let me see. A list of uncompleted projects in which the Chinese citizens said they would stop paying has circulated online. So, uh, so include properties from Evergrande Group, Kaiser Group, 
which have defaulted on their dollar bonds and are also smaller real estate companies. And uh, the China authorities have moved to quash by threatened to rename on the uh, blah, blah, the to to quash the revolt by censoring social media posts and are telling the banks to keep the money flowing to to the developers and they are trying to make good on their promises to deliver to do to deliver the homes to buyers so the uh the authorities are moving to make sure that this does not uh boil over and uh by august uh the local governments are all starting new projects new things to try to you know of uh, save the real estate and uh Zhenzhou plans a real estate fund worth 10 billion dollars to save the sector and uh there is some uh, a lot of details about how to how they're going to spend this money and then uh, basically there will be uh 30 percent of this 10 so 10 billion dollars will actually act as a parent fund and then uh so the sub, then they will create sub funds where the sub funds will be funded 30% from this parent funds and 70% will be raised from the city and district levels, uh, state owned companies. Basically, they are going to draw money from uh, the state owned companies to help to you know, build this uh, bailout fund for the for existing projects. So, uh, so a lot of details, you can actually find the links at, uh, in the hotspot map on defense politics Asia. Dot com and uh this news is coming from global times itself uh the is basically a china state media so and then uh and then by the 15th by the midpoint of august uh the home prices still fell you know continue to fall as the mortgage boycott continues so whatever the government is doing is still not fast enough the boycotts continue the home prices fall nobody want to buy and um uh, things continue to fall further and uh and then hong kong uh, audit watchdog starts to probe uh the evergrande's uh, property services unit so the this is basically on the same day uh this news on the 15th of august and then the auditors are going to look into 13.4 billion yuan of deposit the subsidiaries used to back several loans so they are trying you no know, so they will also cover the audit work carried out by the PwC and uh on the 2020 annual re accounts basically they they start to you know suspect that Evergrande is actually reporting fake information and uh so in December Evergrande uh failed to pay interest on the 645 million and uh, 590 million junk bonds even after a grace period so you know and then the firm has not published its account since June 2021 interim report where it disclosed that it has 294 billion US dollars of total liability. 294 billion. So basically, this is a bigger, more debt than uh, most of the countries, basically. And uh, they, so Evergrande property has, of course, uh, been suspended from trading. And uh, another group called Country Garden. Uh, warns that their profit will plunge 70 percent because of this uh, property crisis and and uh, this also adds signs to the deepening crisis in the property market in china and they they blame that the profit slump due to tough business environments faced by real estate uh, industry because of china's uh covid19 pandemic restrictions so uh yeah whatever they want to blame uh this is the reality and um and then the ch and then uh, the cities the government side you know continue to try to help uh these property developers so now cities are you no know, offering uh, discounts for group buys you know as if we are buying some uh you no know, uh milk or you know some some commodities you know like oranges or something you know buy two get one free kind of of course, it's not buy two get one free, but they are they are actually tr trying to help the developer drive sales, and um, so they so these cities are you know arranging residents to make property purchases together as a group, you know backed by the government, and uh, so so for example, the city of Huang Huang Gang, Huang Gang, I don't know, Huang Gang, Huangzhou Chi Huang Gang, I think it's Huang Gang, uh, 
in the central province of Hubei is giving discount of at least 3% to any group with at least 20 buyers. So it's a kind of a, like making property sounds really cheap <laughs> or cheapen the, the whole concept of what properties are. And uh, this, this, this is, you know, the extreme measures, you know, China got local governments are actually doing to help to you know, to fight against this trend. And uh, jumping ahead to October, because um, it's just a, getting a few. This is definitely not a, not every single news there is. So, you know, just to get a taste of what is happening. Uh, the CFI holding uh, has defaulted on their bonds. So a 2.5 billion uh, convertible bonds uh, with an interest rate of 6.95%, which is actually very, very high, <clears throat> did not receive payment. Uh, so in terms of the interest for the bond holders, and uh, this causes the city share, the, sorry, not city, CFI share to fall more than 10% uh, on Thursday, Thursday uh, on the, on that, on the October 8th day. Then uh, what happens is that the subsequent week, they have lost a 21.2% of the share price as well. So basically, uh, it's a massive sell off of massive sell off of this company and uh, this also affected you no know, other uh developers you know they are even more financial resilient uh all recorded big losses in their bonds and share prices due to this news so and then by by the next day uh, there is also news you know of local governments so we are going back to you know the government's trying to help so we have this news of uh, things getting more and more shady and then we have the local governments trying to you know uh, stop the thing getting more and more depressed the local governments literally just gave up and they just, they just buy the homes themselves so ac according to so to you know this example in Suzhou uh, Suzhou is basically uh, the city very near to uh, Shanghai this uh, so basically Suzhou uh, basically bought 5,000 units of homes uh, in September and basically that is half of all the homes being sold uh, in that very month and in and in uh, Jinan which is uh, in the Shandong province Jinan uh, Shandong Shandong is Shandong 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 I, I'm, I'm very bad at, with China geography okay forget forget it it's not important um, yeah somewhere in China uh, basically the government also purchased 3,000 new flats for long-term rental use so basically the long-term rental use is definitely an as an excuse because you don't really need that much so unless they are expecting the economy to be crashed to you no know, nothingness and then they are already preparing uh, 3,000 new flats you know to make sure that they can uh, handle all the refugees you know, the financial refugees I don't know so and then um, and in, in, uh, in one of the suburbs in the city I believe this is referring to Suzhou 400 out of 525 units were bought by the local government and uh and uh this is an, an another uh estate you no know, developed by the china venke and another another one of these very big developers 200 out of 357 houses were snapped snapped up by the Suzhou authorities so this is massive massive uh, buying by the local governments uh, to prop up the property market uh, unnaturally and of and this is reported by SCMP and uh, and then uh, then came this news uh, four days later uh, after the this news broke that Beijing is going to crack down the Ministry of Finance of China will be cracking down on local governments uh, subsidiaries so so the local governments have their government back uh, companies so there are companies you know backed by local governments and apparently the the local governments are using all these local back companies to buy land to buy land from the government themselves so so the government because the developers are all broke now uh they all have no money no liquidity they are unable to buy land so land price have dropped tremendously as such the local governments that release the land uses their own companies to buy the land basically they're taking the money from one pocket and put it to another pocket to to you know artificially raise the numbers and not just this these local com these companies that are backed by the local governments are actually borrowing the money from the banks to buy these lands so basically these companies are 
uh, getting more debts unnecessarily on to buy land which they will later have problem building and selling the, the stuff and then they will default themselves on to the banks and then causing the banks to default as well because the banks will will have no money because they give up the money out and then this money is invested uh, poorly and there's no ROI and the banks will actually basically lose money as well so uh, this so basically the finance uh, ministry of finance basically call this a sham they say that the local governments should not increase land revenues in a sham way on the back of government back companies to remedy local coffers because uh, in local governments a huge portion can be up to 40 to 50 percent of their revenues come from land sales so or no property land property related uh incomes so this is targeting state-owned companies and local government financial vehicles they are buying uh, land more actively than before to support the land market and then uh, this the problem with this transaction will create hidden debt for local governments and this is something the central gov government does not want to see so this is also a revelation into how the Ch china works and it's not everything that is controlled and decided by xi jinping or the central government a lot of the things is local politics local governments and they are making decisions themselves and the central government is trying very hard to hold them back and try to keep them in line this this is not very very different from the situation in the united states where the states all the, all the different states have their own laws and rules and a way of doing things where the president of the united states and the federal government actually have no control over and uh so according to uh this uh, economist uh with the commerce bank they say that uh, things are likely to be opaque if a local government sell land to its or other local governments finance financing vehicles at or uh, soe basically uh i think it's SOE is a i forgot why it said state owned company enterprise and then uh it's basically transferring from one left pocket to the right pocket and uh so so basically local governments can be liable for indirectly through impl implicit guarantees which means local governments are effectively borrowing more and then put more pressure on the country's financial system in a hidden manner so so you no know, things are going to shit and this is 18th of october this is just recent news and uh on the latest news on the property front uh one another you no know, developer has went to shit so uh there's a, this de chinese developer unit from uh, this the yango group called the yango justice international limited uh has been ordered to close down to wind up because they have defaulted on a uh, offshore debt and uh they missed paying a uh, 27.3 million dollars of interest on two us dollar bonds within a 30-day grace period so <clears throat> capping months of debt struggles at six payment extensions so <clears throat> they have already you know been missing our uh, payments and uh, things basically you no know, there's no way the government want to continue so this firm is a unit of the yango group co yang guang chen ji tuan so you know if you are investing in yang yang guang chen you know the yango group uh, good luck <clears throat> so this is just the overview of the property crisis that is hitting china however this has not crushed china china is still around and uh, is it, this is going against the grain of what uh, many of these youtubers you know do, doing all these china doom videos uh, <clears throat> all these the, all these uh crisis on the property market has not uh destroyed uh the basically the chinese government or the you know the or crush the communist party not yet and uh so this and uh, this video has been already 20 minutes so you know this will be the first part on a, of a multi-part uh series on this because i realized that i think it's better to break this up break this up you know maybe digest it better so that you know you don't miss all this information and uh check out and look out for the part two of this video and i'll see you in the next update